The year of virtual reality turned out to be the run-up to mixed reality, and today we have Meta's mid-range XR headset on our teardown table, the MetaQuest 3. A key feature that was missing on the Quest Pro, the time of flight sensor, is front and center on the Quest 3, and by adopting the Quest Pro's pancake lenses, the Quest 3 presents a substantially thinner profile when compared to the Quest 2, and yet it manages to weigh 10 grams more than its predecessor somehow. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's the fine folks at Creative Electron casually dropping another superhuman x-ray like it's no big thing. Thanks guys. It looks like there's a lot of screws in there, and I'm guessing that big old black rectangle in the middle is our battery. So here's what I want to know. At half the price of the Quest Pro, are we getting half the functionality and performance in the MetaQuest 3? Let's take a look inside and find out. Before we get started, I need to remove the head strap which loops through the headset and clips onto the speaker arms. The face cushion is also clipped on and comes away easily enough, which is a huge plus as both these parts need to be replaceable, because sweat is gross and these parts are going to get sweaty. Underneath those parts, there's an additional rubberized layer that's designed to block any light leakage. This is clipped in too, but while making my way around, I hear a distinct snap of plastic near the proximity sensor at the top. Turns out the clips securing the rubber face guard to the frame are stubborn around this area, probably to ensure the whole thing doesn't just fall off. But clearly, I broke something as a result. A bit of cosmetic damage might not be the end of the world, but it's annoying nonetheless. Popping off the plastic lens cover reveals... Nothing at all, which shouldn't be too surprising because the Quest 3 didn't inherit the fabulous eye tracking the Quest Pro got, so we're not seeing any of the IR emitters or sensors we found in that premium headset. Meta hasn't made any repair manuals public for any of their Quest headsets, so it's hard to know what to go for next. My instinct is to get every screw around the lenses, around the edges, and on the nose bridge. And there are a lot of screws. And I mean a lot. There's lots of screws here. There are so many screws here. And one more. I'm willing to bet the faceplate is now only held in place by clips. Right enough, it pops off with a bit of help from my trusty spudger and a bit of elbow grease. Once open, I have a series of camera and sensor cables snaking up to the main board. I need to get that front faceplate off, and that means removing the antenna bracket. Now we have access to the press connectors leading to the time of flight sensor, cameras, and microphone mounted to the faceplate. Let's take a look at that new time of flight sensor. This little marvel of technology continuously measures distance to an object and is a key component in mixed reality hardware. Aside from being instrumental in hand and controller tracking on the Quest 3, it's also the reason why you no longer need to specify a safe space. The depth sensor takes care of that by automatically mapping out the room and any objects around you. What I found most interesting about the Quest 3's time of flight sensor is that it fits perfectly where the Quest Pro's time of flight sensor would have gone had it not been dropped from the production model. What's more, the connector actually fits the connector that's on the Quest Pro board as well. Whether that's significant in any way, shape or form is yet to be seen, but for the time being, the only Meta headset to have a time of flight sensor is the Quest 3. With the faceplate out of the way, I can proceed to remove the heatsink bracket and the fan that's helping wick the heat away from the headset. The heat profile of the headset is also interesting. While the small gap around the edges of the faceplate allow for airflow, most of the heat escapes through the thin plastic of the faceplate itself. There's various press connectors and coax cables to remove, and a few screws holding the mainboard in place. The Quest 3's mainboard has the latest iteration of Qualcomm's Snapdragon 8 SoC, the XR2 Gen 2. Leaked benchmarks suggest that this newer SoC improves on the XR2 Plus found on the Quest Pro, both in performance and power efficiency. After all this digging, I finally reached the battery sitting snug under this metal plate. It's taken me three fix mats, a single tray of plastic, and very careful organizing of about 50 screws to get this far. I'm glad to see that the battery is replaceable, but my word, it's as much of a pain to get to as the Quest 2's battery. No improvements in design there. No fancy pants curved battery shenanigans here like we saw in the Quest Pro. It's a bog standard lithium polymer battery with a capacity of 19.44 watt hours. By comparison, the Quest Pro has a 20.58 watt hour battery, and the Quest 2 has a 14 watt hour battery. That goes some way towards explaining why the smaller Quest 3 packs more weight than the Quest 2. The last thing I want to see in this headset is the upgraded 2064x2208 LCD panels running at 120Hz. That's right folks, forget micro OLED, we're still running on LCDs here. 
And while these are an improvement over the Quest Pro's LCDs, they're still a far cry from the micro OLED panels we expect to see in the Vision Pro. Let's get up close with our microscope from our friends at Evident Scientific. With your eyeballs close enough to the panels to be on a first name basis with them, it's only fair to know a little bit about those panels. Manipulating the intensity of red, green and blue clusters results in a mixing of colors at our puny human 1x perspective. Zooming out a little, we can clearly see the 45 degree diagonal black lines running across the panel. And that's because these panels are mounted at an angle to increase the headset's field of view. But that comes at the cost of this tearing effect, a direct result of using the cheaper LCD panels. With the headset out the way, let's see how difficult it is to remove the bat, and out it comes easy peasy. Nifty design. I could probably stop the tear down here, but I'm curious to see what else is in there. There's a single torque screw inside the battery compartment, which is weird because up until now we've almost exclusively had Phillips screws. A few more torque screws are hidden under the battery sticker. That's a tad naughty, it wouldn't kill them to mark where the screws are hidden on the sticker itself. The Quest Pro controller had a glued on top, so I'm guessing we're dealing with the same design here. A bit of heat, and it feels like my pick is making light work of the glue. Lifting the top plate away reveals a bunch of IR emitters. It seems they only use torque screws on the controllers, and I'm removing a few more before I decide to try to pry the handles apart. To my surprise, it separates quite easily, revealing a magnet on the Hall Effect trigger and a haptic motor. More good news, the handle simply separates from the top once the ribbon cables are disconnected. This gives me a full view of the controller mainboard, which is significantly simpler than the Quest Pro controller mainboard. Meta saved some money here, and given the accuracy of these controllers, I'd say it'll be a good long while, if ever, before we see another complex controller in next generation virtual reality headsets. Overall, I personally don't think it would be fair to say that the Quest 3 is a compromise between the Quest Pro and the Quest 2. The Quest 3 does have better LCD panels, it has a time of flight sensor that makes for a much better pass through experience, and to top it all off, it has a better processor too. The main trade off is the loss of eye tracking, and Meta clearly made some cost savings by reducing the overall complexity of the Meta Quest 3. Moreover, the design is a significant improvement over the Quest Pro when it comes to repairability, especially where the controller is concerned, though it clearly has its design philosophy firmly rooted in the Quest 2's construction, which means it's complicated to dismantle and the battery is far more difficult to reach than it should be. Combine that with the lack of manuals and the unavailability of OEM spare parts, and we're giving the Quest 3 a provisional score of 4 out of 10.